Recently, Milliman released a study titled, titled How Do Individuals with Behavioral Health Conditions Contribute to Physical and Total Healthcare Spending? How was the study conducted, and were there any trends you were especially interested in learning more on? The more recent study that I think you're referring to was really meant to look at the impact that people with these illnesses have on medical costs, total medical costs. And so in this study, uh, Milliman um, picked only the year 2017 uh, to look at this data, the most recent year they have data in their databases. And there they looked at 21 million people. Um, these are again, commercially insured population. The two, and what we did was we looked at, or they looked at um, the 10% most expensive patients that mostly, met, you know, mostly driven by physical medical costs. So we looked at that and what percent did that 10% have on driving or accounting for total medical spending, total healthcare spending? So that 10% of the population drove, contributed, caused, whatever term you want to use, 70% of all healthcare spending. So 10% of the 21 million people um, contributed 70% of the cost for the 21 million people. Now, then the purpose of the study was to look at the behavioral health subgroup, both in the high cost population and in the total 21 million lives that were measured, their claims. And the um, in, the, in the top 10%, 57% uh, of that group had a mental health or substance abuse diagnosis, which is very high, much higher than any of us expected. And that subgroup in the, of the 10% contributed 44% of all healthcare spending. Uh, so for the, even though this was, you know, 10, it was basically less than 6% of the total population of 21 million accounted for 44% of all healthcare spending for that population. Now, if you imagine that uh, spread out over the whole healthcare population for all beneficiaries, Medicare, Medicaid, we would expect the Medicaid numbers would be even more dramatic than these numbers because there's typically a lot higher prevalence of serious and moderately ill mental health substance use problems in Medicaid just by the nature of the entries. Um, so that would basically mean if you look at the whole U.S. healthcare pop, you know, over three and a half trillion dollars a year spending, basically six or seven percent of the population that have one of these these comorbid illnesses are going to drive almost half of all those spending. Based on the study findings, a significant gap was represented between those suffering from behavioral health conditions and their ability to afford treatment, with 50 percent of all those with these conditions having less than $68 of total annual spending. What factors contribute to this gap and how can these lack of coverage options impact overall health and healthcare spending? So the other finding that really wasn't the focus of this study, it wasn't a study on disparities as much as a study to look at the outsized impact that a mental health condition might have on medical spending, um, was how little care, specialty care these people got. So for the whole population of the, uh, of, the, um, of the behavioral group who had a behavioral diagnosis or tr got treated for a behavioral problem, 50% of the group got less than $68 a year of, of specialty behavioral treatment. Uh, and about 25% got less than $500, somewhere between 68 and 500. So essentially 75% of this population got limit almost none or very little specialty behavioral treatment, despite them being diagnosed by a licensed healthcare professional who felt they um, warranted a diagnosis and warranted treatment. So that was a bit of a surprise. We, as I mentioned, these two earlier, earlier Milliman studies uh, showed a lot of disparities in access, but we didn't measure the percent of the population, how little or how much care they got. Um, so those two uh, findings that were, um, unusual, uh, not been reported much. There's been, a, as you probably know, a lot of data to show that a small percent of chronic medically ill patients drive a big impact of total health care costs. But there's been less attention paid to what percent of that group has mental health and substance abuse problems. 
and as you look at the report that Milliman did, it's interesting that the majority of these costs are driven by people with mild to moderate mental health substance abuse problems. There's commonly a, a misconception. It's the more the patients with the more severe mental illnesses like psychoses or schizophrenia are the ones that drive these costs. That's not true. They represent a very small percent of prevalence, or particularly for the commercial population, but even for other beneficiary, other insured beneficiaries. So they're um, the and those are people that probably could be the easiest to treat and yet weren't and weren't getting that treatment. So I think the main takeaway for healthcare policy leaders on the provider side or the health plan side or employers is that if you want to have an impact on total medical spending, you better identify this group early and, and provide some specialty intervention sooner. 